honestly, life has been exactly the same. Um, again, I don't know. It's just I learned a lot of lessons. Um, I got a lot of confidence from the performance. I know it didn't go my way, but I know that I can hang at that level. Um, I know I can go five rounds and push the pace. So there's a lot of good things that came out of the fight, even though I didn't get the result I wanted. And it didn't seem like you took a whole lot of damage in that fight. So I guess how soon after the fight did you hop back into like training? Because you know you see some of these guys, they lose their title fight. They it's not a one sided loss. They they get that itch almost immediately. Yeah. So I was. It was probably a good thing that we had a holiday around Argentina and that sort of thing planned, so I had to take time off. But, um, yeah, as soon as I was back, so I think it was two weeks I was over there, and as soon as I was back, I was back in the gym getting ready for whatever the future held at the time. And, and of course, uh, once they announced this card, it seems like you were the name everyone assumed would be on this card. So did the UFC tell you, like, even how far ahead of time did they tell you, like, we're coming to Perth and you're going to be on this card regardless? Um, well, I knew they were coming to Perth, and I don't, I don't remember how long and uh, before the fight they gave me Kai's name, but um, I wanted to be on it. They obviously were happy to have me on it, have a Perth boy represent on the card. So, um, as long as I wasn't injured, I was taking the fight, whoever they gave me. So I think, yeah, they just threw a name, and they knew I was going to say yes. And what do you make of Kai as an opponent? He's a, a guy from this part of the world that's kind of the veteran of this division. So I'm sure you watched him before you got to the UFC. And so what do you expect from him on Sunday morning? Yeah, he's a very good fighter. He's uh, super explosive, uh, very good takedown defense. And he hits really hard. So I definitely have to mind my P's and Q's, but um, I just think I'm better at the end of the day. And we're going to find out on Sunday morning. Have you... The, the approach to this as compared to Pantoja, because like you said, Kai has, you know, he hits hard and not everyone has knockout power in this division. Have you had to approach Kai differently than you did for a Pantoja in a five-round fight? Um, not really. I mean, they both throw wide shots more so than anything else. It's just like I'm not preparing for a guy who wants to take me down constantly. Um, so... I guess more of my camp is focused on the striking element. Um, I'm not delusional. There is a chance, especially if it's not going well for him, that he will try to take me down. So I still need to keep that up and keep improving at it. But um, a lot of it's focused on the stand-up. Were you hoping this would be a five-round co-main event? Because it's like, you know, lately we've seen these, there's a title fight and then maybe a co-main event would be five rounds. Yeah, so after going five rounds, I definitely want to go five again. Um, I think five suits me. I think... Um, the fact that I was finishing over the top of Pantoja means that um, I can finish over the top of a lot of people, and I just think five suits me. Are you surprised that you're fighting, you're returning before Pantoja in that fight? <laughs> no, not at all. He first of all said that um, he needed to take some time off, and uh, I like being active. I like fighting, um, so yeah, not surprised at all. Can I get your thoughts on what happened to Muhammad Mahayev? Uh, he was a big name in this division, and now he's no longer part of the promotion. I don't want to kick a man when he's down as much as possible, but, um, yeah, he made some decisions. He obviously wasn't... Uh, people didn't make a fan of people, I guess, as not the fans and obviously the people in the company. So uh, I feel bad for what happened to him, but I guess he did it to himself. Then two quick ones unrelated to your fight, but I'm sure you saw in November they're going to implement those new rules that allow 12 to 6 elbows and redefine grounded opponents. I'm curious, do you like those rules, and do you think it's been a long time coming? Um, I don't know if I like the rules or not. I kind of do, kind of don't. I want to see how they, how they translate. I'm excited to throw a 12 to 6 elbow at somebody, like climb the tree and <laughs> throw one, but um, I don't want to get hit by one so much, so I will see how it works out. And, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Drikas and Israel? Yeah, I think I think Izzy's really good, as everybody knows. Um, I think he's going to hit him. He's going to be able to find a way to put his hands on him to start with, and then I think Drikas is going to keep pushing and then eventually walk onto a really devastating shot. Thank you. Steve right here. You and I talked yesterday. You said you kind of have a bucket list. You want to get a, a fight with a Mexican fighter because you love the culture and... and everything kind of about that. So where did that start for you? Like, how did you, how did you come about, you know, being into the Mexican fight culture? Um, so, I mean, 
there's been so many, like Julio Cesar Chavez, Canelo Alvarez, um, uh, far out, I'm going to butcher his name, the guy that fought Manny Pacquiao, um, Marquez, yeah. Um, there's been so many great Mexican boxers, um, and again, they're like, they're fighters, and at the end of the day, that's what I like watching. I, I, I respect and I love watching technicians as well, but I want to see somebody who's a technician that goes out and um, wants to brawl with people too. Like, that's, that's my favourite thing to watch. And then how do you think, uh, how do you think the fight's going to go between uh, Brandon Royval and Todd Sirotyra? I, I think Tatsuru Tara has a really good chance of winning this fight. I don't think Roy Val's takedown defense and overall jiu-jitsu will be able to stop Tyra. I don't necessarily think he'll finish him, but I just think he'll be able to take him down and control where the fight gets played out. What do you think the best meme you've gotten so far has been? Because I think there was there was one, it was a 305, and it was like a cast of The Office with all the <laughs> fighters on it. What do you think the best one you've gotten is? Um, I do honestly really like the one of Al Pacino sitting in front with the, uh, the yeah, the uh, Botafogo out the back, and I, I think that's a pretty funny one. I like that one. Steve, you go back to uh, last year, UFC 284. You're actually uh, fighting at Eternal uh, MMA the night before, knowing that you probably should have been on that UFC card. Fast forward to uh, to now, you're fighting in the co-main event. In front of the, the Perth home crowd is something you always wanted. How, how's that uh, build-up been for you? Yeah, it's sort of weird how quickly you get used to um, your fighting away. Like, this whole week sort of felt kind of foreign. I'm in my own house, I'm... Yeah, doing all the things I normally do when I'm training, but I'm fighting this week, so it's kind of odd that that was normal just over a year ago, and now it's foreign. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. Got all my family, friends, and people that have supported me coming along to the fight, um, and I can't wait to put on a great performance for them. As MMA fans, we always knew who you were, and we always knew that you were destined uh, to be where you are now. But how how has your life changed? Obviously, you know, being in the limelight, we saw you with the uh, the local AFL team with West Coast Eagles getting presented a jumper. I mean, how you're still the same person, but how how's everything else changed for you in the in a short amount of time? Um, yeah, so mostly things haven't changed, but. Yeah, every now and then I get to do something really cool like that. I get to meet the Eagles. I got to meet the Wallabies the other day. Um, I get to have these experiences that not everybody gets to have and kids like kids dream about. Um, but every other time of the day is the same boring life I had before. I go to training in the morning. I'm there basically all day, and then I go home and go to bed. So, yeah. And we had Jack Della Maddalena last year, uh, obviously Perth first Perth fighter. You're obviously the second, but again, you've got the co-main event, so obviously a top billing. So it's, uh, that must be obviously huge, exciting for you. But the, the amount of fighters from Perth coming out and, and doing well, and obviously we've got three guys from Perth uh, fighting on the Dana White Contender Series coming up. I mean, it's huge for MMA in Perth, isn't it? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, for a long time growing up myself, I would got told I need to go to the US if I want to be any good I got to go to this place and that place and you can't do it from here it's not big enough so the fact that yeah you've had Jack Della you've had me doing what we're doing and now you have the younger guys Drillich, uh, Cody, Quillen coming up from Perth as well it just shows anybody that doesn't matter where you're from you can you can make it happen if you really want it to happen. And speaking of history again uh, aside from the in probably staying in combat sports, we've got another young Perth fighter, uh, Alex Winwood, fighting for a world title uh, in only his fifth professional fight on September 7. I saw you caught up with him uh, during the week of the Welcome to Country. Uh, what do you think of Alex Winwood and, uh, and a message for, for him as he tries to uh, break Jeff Fennick's record of uh, becoming the fastest Australian to win a world title? Yeah, obviously he's a great talent. Um, I've been at I think I think I've only been at one of his fights live once, and he's yeah very technically, like he's very technically good, at which you have to be if you want to be fighting for a world title, right? So yeah, he's a very good fighter, and um, yeah, I think he can do it. I think he's a great fighter, and I wish him the best of luck. All the best to you as well, Steve Astro Boy. Steve, just down here. Uh, a big thing uh, that you've spoken about in the past is opponents' toughness and, and being a, a tough individual. Uh, where do you rate Kai Kara France's toughness? Yeah, he's very tough. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the, the fight he fought. 
doesn't matter who he fought. Anyway, but he's, uh, yeah, he was getting choked and he couldn't get the guy off his back, but he, even though he's deep in the choke, he was fighting the whole time, he didn't give up. He just, he's a tough guy. Um, I'm just hoping he's not as tough as I am. Uh, your last fight before you joined the UFC uh, was here in the hometown, uh, but now obviously a much bigger stage. Uh, is family coming out to see you? Yep. How is that for you? You're fighting, I suppose, technically not the biggest fight of the career, but still a very big fight at home. How is that to have the family around? Yeah, it's good. Like, it's very good. Um, I've been very lucky, though, in the fact that my family have travelled to Brazil and um, Vegas or uh, New York, all that sort of stuff. They've always sort of been around. So um, I'm very blessed that way. And um, it just, yeah, I get that same thing, just they don't have to travel now. I feel like Perth really embraces its sporting uh, heroes and legends. I was at the Perth Museum the other day. There's a lot of uh, Perth sports memorabilia. Uh, do you think we could get something of you in there? I think I need to do a lot more in the sport before that's even a, a yeah a twinkle in my eye. So, um, yeah, that would be awesome, but I've got a lot more to do. Thank you. One more in the front right here. Uh, just purely out of curiosity, because I assume I'm the only Mexican here. Um, <laughs> yep. There's debate between Canelo and Chavez Sr. as the best Mexican boxer. Uh, I'm curious where you stand on that. Chavez Sr., for sure. <laughs> yeah. Steve, over here, mate. Um, Canelo is amazing, though. I'm not taking it away, but Chavez was What do you amazing. make? People are saying he's ducking opponents now, because like, he doesn't want to fight Crawford, he doesn't want to fight Benavidez. I doubt that's true. He's gone up and fought way above his own weight against the toughest guys in the, in the world. Um, so I can't imagine he's ducking anybody, but, um, I mean, they said the same thing about Floyd. Uh, he fought all the best guys for a long time, and then near the end of the career, he didn't necessarily fight the people they all wanted him to fight, but to say that he's ducking people, I think, is also um, crazy. Uh, Steve, you spoke yesterday about you think you're probably two wins away from being back in that title contention. Have you outlined a path back? there yet after what was a disappointing earlier fight this year I suppose well, the result was disappointing um, I have like a rough guide obviously Kai's first on the list and then Amir Albazi and I don't know Moreno, Roy Vile, somebody like that um, I think would be the guys and, uh, It's a bit of a race between you and Jack to be the first champion <laughs> at this stage is the goal, you're the co-main event, is the goal to be the headline act and defending a title in Perth yeah, of course. That's yeah. I, whether it's the being the main event or not, my goal is to be on Perth as the, a title holder. I got um, an opportunity to obviously fight for a title, and if I had won that and came here, I would have been the co-main event still. Just I would have had a title, and that would have been um, very exciting.